So, after obtaining um, expression for E x plus y, in fact, we showed that E of x plus y is E x plus E y and under independence of x and y, we showed that variance of x plus y is uh, equal to variance of x plus variance of y. Then, we can generalize these results for any finite number of random variables. So, therefore, if you have x 1, x 2, x n as n identically distributed random variables discrete or continuous, then expectation of x 1 plus x 2 plus x n will be equal to expectation of x 1 plus expectation of x 2 plus expectation of x 1 x n. So, want to show that the say that this is um, you can uh, always take the um, uh, sum of the expectation uh, uh, sorry I mean uh, expectation of the sum as sum of the expectations. So, of course, these have to be identically distributed. Now, uh, if the x i's are also independent, then we can also extend this result that variance of x 1 plus x 2 plus x n is equal to variance of x 1 plus variance of x 2 plus variance of x n. Because, um, as we saw for the two case two variables that the product term vanishes. So, here also uh, because of independence the product term because you will have two um, product of two things at a time that means of the kind you will have expression like expectation of x i minus expectation of x i into y, um, x j minus expectation of x j. So, uh, under independence this will go inside and therefore, each of the term will vanish and so you will only get the square terms will be left when you square up this minus the expectation of the sum and therefore, you will get the uh, sum of the variances. So, under independence you get that result. Now, formula for the variance of sum when the random variables are not independent will be discussed later. So, we will give you a general formula uh, when the variables are not independent. So, this is one thing and so we can uh, use it for computing uh, various um, expectations and so on. Now, let me discuss an interesting um, result which is called Boole's inequality and uh, let me first just describe what uh, we want to say here. This is uh, that uh, if you have a 1, a 2, a n as n events and uh, the, so then corresponding to these n events, I define the corresponding indicator variable. That means, x i is 1 if a i occurs i varying from 1 to n and it is 0 otherwise. Okay. So, therefore, um, and then I let x be the sum of these indicator variables, these n indicator variables. So, uh, in words x denotes the number of the events a i that occur, right? because x i is 1 if a i occurs. So, if x for example, if capital x is 5, then that means 5 of the a i's have occurred this will add up to 1 plus 1 for 5 events which have occurred right and define another uh, variable y which is equal to 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1 and 0 otherwise so otherwise means that you see if x is 1 or greater than 1 then y is 1 but if x is 0 then y will be 0 so from definition it follows that uh, x equal to 0 implies uh, y equal to 0, since your x is otherwise greater than or equal to 1. See, either an event occurs or it does not occur. So, uh, if any one of the events occurs, then x will be at least 1 and if no, none of the events occur, then it will be equal to 0. So, therefore, um, x is always greater than or equal to 1 or it is 0. I mean, if one of the not always, what I mean is that um, if uh, at least one event occurs, then x will be always greater than or equal to 1. Otherwise, if none of the events occur, then uh, x will be 0 and in that case y will also be 0. So, therefore, it implies that x is greater than or equal to y, right? because um, x will take value 1 or 2 or 3, your y is 1 and whenever x is 0, your y is 0. So, it is clear that x is always greater than or equal to y and this implies that your expected value of x will also be uh, greater than or equal to expected value of y, because this means x minus y is non-negative 
and therefore, expectation of x minus y. Now, I am just writing the general expression here. So, that means, for example, uh, a general expression for E x minus y would be minus infinity to infinity x minus y f x y x y d x d y. So, this integrand is non negative and therefore, the integral will be non negative and so, it follows that your E x must be greater than or equal to E y. Okay. So, that is uh, the important result and that is how through this we will uh, derive the uh, Boole's inequality finally. Now, look at E x. So, E x is expectation of I take it inside being linear function. So, I can exchange the expectation and summation sign. So, sigma i varying from 1 to n expected x i, but expected x i is what? expected s i is 1 into probability x i equal to 1 plus 0 into probability x i equal to 0, since x i's take values only 1 and 0. So, this is 1 into probability x i is equal to 1 plus 0 into probability x i equal to 0, but then so this is 0 and this probability x i equal to 1 is probability of occurrence of a i and therefore, this is 1 into p a i. So, which is p a i right and so uh, your some of some of the expectations of x i is is equal to sigma p a i. Now, x i's are Bernoulli and you can see that x i's are Bernoulli random variables right, because x i's take value 1 or 0 and uh, uh, the probability of success as you can call it is p a i for x i right. Okay. Now, um, what is probability y? So, probability y is probability that at least one of the a i occurs. So, this is union a i, i varying from 1 to n. So, this is at least one of the a i occurs and so, uh, uh, well, uh, I, which way would you, we are saying y is equal to 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1 and this translates to uh, x is greater than or equal to 1 if at least one of the uh, events a 1, a 2, a n occurs. right? And so, this is probability union i varying from 1 to n a i. And so, expectation E y will be 1 into, because y is 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1. So, this is union i varying from 1 to n a i plus 0 into a probability union a i complement, right, probability of this complement of this event. And so, uh, therefore, this is also equal to uh, E y is equal to simply probability of union a i i varying from 1 to n. And hence, we obtain uh, Boole's inequality, which says that sigma i varying from 1 to n p a i is greater than or equal to probability union a i i varying from 1 to n. So, in, in words it says that probability of occurrence of at least one event out of given uh, n events. So, probability occurrence of at least one event is no greater than the probability or the sum of the probabilities of occurrence of individual events. So, this in words is your uh, Boole's inequality, which you might say is okay, uh, uh, simple to uh, accept or uh, this is uh, this sounds very, very reasonable, but uh, we had to go through this uh, process to be able to derive this inequality. Right. So, this is this this says at least one of the events must occur. So, probability of that and that cannot be greater than some of the probabilities of the individual events. Okay. Now, let us further go on. I want to again continue with uh, using the uh, whatever we have developed about uh, adding up uh, random variables and then computing their uh, expectations and other results through uh, summing up random variables. So, now look at uh, the chi square n random variable. So, this random variable is defined as uh, summation i varying from 1 to n z i square, where each z i is standard normal i varying from 1 to n. Right? The, 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 the expectation of z i is 0 and the variance of z i is 1. So, each of the z i's is uh, standard normal. Uh, standard normal. Then uh, look at the, so we want to compute the, uh, first of all we want to compute the uh, CDF of z i square. So, this will be, let me make it clear. Okay. So, f z i square y 
uh, will be probability z i square less than or equal to y. And this uh, in the earlier one of the earlier lectures, I have already discussed. You can write this as, so what you are saying is that your z i square should be uh, less than or equal to y, which means that your z i should be less than root y. So, it should lie between minus root y and root y, your z i, right. So, that the square does not exceed y. And so, the, this probability can be written as, because you will be taking it this probability z i less than root y, and then you want to subtract z i less than minus root y. So, this is the probability, right. And therefore, when we differentiate this side, I differentiate. So, I will get uh, the p d f of uh, z i square, this is z i square, which will be equal to. Uh, so, from here we will differentiate. So, that see derivative of root y will be 1 by 2 root y into f of z i root y minus f of z i minus root y. Okay. And uh, for standard normal c, you see uh, what is your this thing is um, a standard normal 1 upon root 2 pi, because sigma is 1 is equal to e raise to minus uh, y square. Uh, so, it is root y. So, it will be root y square upon 2, because sigma square is 1. Okay. So, therefore, and when you square up uh, the minus root and uh, root y, they are both give you e raise to minus y by 2. So, this becomes, um, so this is twice e minus y by 2 and this 2. So, that cancels out. And so, I am left with 1 upon root y, 1 upon root y e raise to minus y by 2. Now, this I can rewrite, because you have 1 upon root 2 and 1 upon root 2, I am writing as 1 upon 2 into 1 upon 2 raise to minus 1 by 2, right. I am doing this or so it is uh, the 1 by 2 is going, yeah. So, uh, 1 by 2 into 1 upon 2 minus 1 by 2, you write this way, then this is left by. So, root 2 root 2 cancels out, you are left with 1 by root 2, right. So, th uh, this whole thing I am writing as 1 by 2. 1 by 2 y raise to minus 1 plus half root pi. See, because this is 1 upon 2 raise to minus half. So, 1 upon 2 raise to minus half into 1 by 2. So, this whole thing is actually equal to 1 by root 2, which appears here 1 by root. So, this 1 by root 2 I am writing in this way. And now, you see if you can um, uh, remember your gamma distribution, then my lambda is half and my alpha is half, because this is alpha minus 1 and then this is lambda y raise to alpha minus 1 e raise to minus lambda y and then lambda. So, this is my gamma. Of course, when you look at the p d f gamma p d f, then it has to be divided by gamma alpha. So, what I am doing is I am writing this as uh, gamma p d f. So, I am then multiplying by 1 by 2, gamma 1 by 2, because I have divided here this expression, this numerator I have divided and multiplied by gamma of 1 by 2. So, when I divide this by gamma 1 by uh, 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 gamma of 1 by 2, the whole thing becomes a gamma, gamma p d f with parameters half and half and I have a gamma 1 by 2 here and there is a root pi. Now, since this is a p d f on the left hand side, this should also be a p d f and therefore, you see that these two must be equal. So, this implies that see earlier in my earlier lecture, when you were talking of you were talking discussing the when I introduced the gamma distribution, um, I told you that we will take it take that um, gamma of half is root pi, but now you have an immediate justification that um, gamma of half must be equal to root pi. And of course, as I said that uh, other um, for other fractional values of uh, um, uh, gamma uh, this gamma function you can uh, the tables are there okay and uh, for integer values we had already seen for positive integers we also saw that gamma alpha will be uh, alpha minus 1 factorial and so on okay so now anyway so continue with this uh, this discussion so therefore uh, we have see, so therefore each z i square has a gamma half half distribution now um, gamma square n uh, sorry, chi square n is z 1 square plus z 2 square plus z n square and z i's are independent. So, then uh, applying the uh, m g f results, we see that uh, you can add up the uh, p d f's here, uh, the parameters and you will again, because each is gamma, 
each z i square is a gamma distribution half half and they are n of them, they are independent. So, therefore, the sum will be gamma n by 2 half, that means the parameter lambda will be half and this will be n by 2. So, you see how um, uh, I mean using all the results that we have so far um, obtained, I thought this was a good way to show you how we use these uh, tools that we are generating. And then uh, you can uh, see the breakup of, so once you have a gamma distribution, then you can see that by adding up these independent gamma distributions, uh, gamma random variables, you get a chi square n. And of course, in a special way, because uh, yeah, so uh, this is another interesting result. And uh, so, see when you have seen that, when if, if n is an integer, if n is an integer, then gamma n is simply um, n, n minus 1 factorial. So, if n is even, then your uh, this thing will be uh, a factorial of n by 2, because n is even and this is an integer. And so, gamma of n by 2 will be uh, n by 2 minus 1 factorial, but if n is odd, then you will be left with gamma half. So, for example, if you say n is 7, then gamma of 7 by 2 will be uh, 5 by 2 into gamma 3 by 2, then gamma 3 by 2 is um, uh, sorry. Uh, 7 by 2, gamma 7 by 2 is 5 by 2, gamma 5 by 2, which will be 3 by 2, gamma 3 by 2 and then that will be half, gamma half. So, which is uh, pi, root pi here. So, this is how you can compute. So, therefore, now you know uh, you can compute this for all values of alpha, integer, non-integer you can find out. right? Okay. So, uh, this was an application of. So, therefore, so you see first you square up uh, independent normal standard normal variates, sum them up, you get a chi square distribution and you are showing is that for uh, n, uh, uh, this is chi square with n degrees of freedom. So, then uh, chi square n is actually obtained by adding up gamma half half. So, I should also mention the importance of chi square distribution. So, if you take talking of chi square n distribution and we said that the n stands for the uh, number of uh, uh, normal standard normal variables that you are squaring and adding up. So, uh, you can think of uh, because you see uh, this is um, x i minus uh, mu i upon sigma uh, sigma i whole square. So, um, this would be your z i right and your uh, z i square. So, you are summing up and uh, uh, so, th this can be treated as this, this can be looked upon as you know uh, to uh, an attempt to uh, estimate the uh, errors involved when one attempts to hit a target in n dimensional space, when coordinate errors are taken to be independent unit normal random variables and right. Okay. So, this is a, you know you can difference from the mean or the whatever kind of error you want to you know talk about and get about talk about their distribution and so on. Then chi square random variables are uh, come in very handy in that. And uh, in fact, it is a most widely used uh, distribution in uh, statistical analysis. So, chi square distribution has lot of importance and very, very uh, often used for uh, your statistical analysis. Okay. So, now let me get back to sums of independent normal uh, variables and this is um, um, if x i's are independent normal random variables, x i's i varying from 1 to n are independent normal random variables with respective parameters uh, mu i sigma i square, right? For for that means for the x i th normal random variable, uh, the mean is mu i and the variance is sigma i square, i varying from 1 to n. Then sigma x i is again normally distributed with parameters sigma mu i and um, uh, the mean as sigma mu i and the variance as uh, some of the individual variances, because the random variables are independent. So, anyway uh, that we know already that the uh, variance for this would be uh, sigma i square and we also know that the mean for sigma x i will be sigma mu i that we these results we have already done, but to show that the sum will again be normally distributed that is the important thing. Now, uh, here again I am going to use see the thing is that I have uh, been using uh, m g f s moment generating functions to uh, talk about uh, uh, summation 
uh, summation of independent uh, uh, random variables, but uh, in text sometimes they introduce the concept of moment generating function much later. So, then they actually do it through the uh, you know writing the joint density function, because uh, these are independent random variables. So, the joint density function will be product of the individuals and then they manipulate the term and actually come to the result. So, maybe you should also do that to get uh, you know a better feeling, but uh, I find that the treatment through m g f is very convenient. Okay. So, um, see the m g f of x i is e raise to mu i t plus half sigma i square t square, this is for the normal uh, mu i sigma i square. And since x i s are independent, i varying from 1 to n, m g f of sigma x i is the product of the individual x i uh, moment generating functions. right? So, this we have done already and so um, uh, the uh, moment generating function of sigma x i would be uh, e raise to mu 1 t plus half sigma 1 square t square and then e raise to mu t mu, mu 2 t plus half sigma 2 square t square and so on up to n. And therefore, you can add up uh, because these are the powers. So, e raise to sigma i varying from 1 to n mu i t plus half uh, sigma uh, i varying from 1 to n sigma i square t square. And so, uh, this is again as I said that uh, uh, the uniqueness of the that means, given this m g f I can immediately conclude that the corresponding uh, distribution is normally distributed with mean sigma i varying from 1 to n mu i and this is variance sigma i varying from 1 to n sigma i square. So, uh, using the uh, m g f you can get these results much quicker, otherwise you have to uh, though the other route is also not a difficult one, it is just that you have to write out these long expressions and then show that uh, the sum of independent uh, normal random variables will be uh, again a normal random variable and these will be the parameters. So, to uh, give you an example about uh, how to make use of the fact that uh, sum of independent normal random variables would also be uh, normally distributed. Uh, let us look at this example from Sheldon Ross. This is a football club team will play a 44 game season. So, you know during summer they all uh, play uh, uh, games with different teams. So, there are 44 games that a particular team will be playing. So, 26 of these with, will be with class A teams and 18 the remaining 18 games will be with class B teams. Okay. So, uh, now uh, probability of winning a match against an A team is 0.4, because A teams are better than the B teams and uh, probability of winning a match against a B team is 0.7. Okay. So, uh, results of different games are independent, we are not assuming that there will be any sort of dependence in uh, the winning of a uh, game with one team and the other. So, uh, we want to uh, the idea is to approximate the probability that the team wins 25 games out of those 44 games played and the uh, second probability that you have to compute is that the team wins more games against class A teams than class B teams. So, uh, let us start by defining the random variable x a as the number of matches won against class A teams. Okay and x b is the number of uh, x b is the number of matches won against class b teams fine. Now, of course, um, x a and x b are binomial random variables, because uh, win is a success and the probability of success is 0.4. So, uh, you can find out out of uh, 26 games played by uh, this team with uh, class a teams then the number of uh, that means, if x a is equal to r, then you will find out the it will be a binomial probability. And similarly, uh, x b is also a binomial random variable. Right. Now, expectation of uh, x a will be 26, so n p, right. the formula is n p. So, 26 games played, probability of winning a match is 0.4. So, this is n p, so that comes out to be 10.4 and the variance is n p q. Right. So, which will be 26 into 0.4 into 0.6 is 6.24. Then similarly, uh, x p being a binomial with parameters 18 and uh, 0.7. So, uh, the uh, expectation of x b will be 12.6 and variance x b equal to n p q, which will be 3.78. 
Now, the idea is that we start approximating, uh, remember uh, when I told you about uh, approximation of binomial uh, distribution by the normal distribution, the condition was that, uh, I mean it, it said that if n p q is greater than or equal to 10, then the uh, approximation is considered good, but here of course, that condition is not being satisfied, because uh, uh, n p q uh, in this case is 6.24 and in this case it is 3.78, but still we are going ahead with the approximation to just to get an idea, because I want to show, show you the application of uh, adding up normal uh, variates. Okay, so, required probability uh, is that x a plus x b together the number of matches <coughs> 1 against class a teams and the number of matches 1 against class b teams, they must add up to more than 25, 25 or more than 25. Okay. Now, uh, even though I am approximating x a and x b by normal, but they are discrete random variables, they are binomial and so the continuity correction factor must be used here. So, this will be since this is greater than or equal to 25, this will be 24.5, because remember you, you have uh, this on 25. So, your bar is like this. So, the bar starts from 24.5 and you want to approximate this, you want to include this area, because the probability here is greater than or equal to 25. So, it will be 24.5. So, probability x a plus x b greater than or equal to 24.5. Now, I standardize this. Um, uh, probability by uh, subtracting the mean, which is 23, uh, 12.6 and 10.4 add up to 23, and the two variances add up to uh, 3.7 and 6.24 is 10.02. So, this is what you have. Now, this becomes a standard normal variate, and therefore, uh, this uh, probability z greater than 1.5 divided by square root of 10.02. So, this will be 1 minus phi of. So, this number comes out to be 0.4739. So, the pro required probability is 1 minus the normal table, uh, the standard normal probability of this number. So, this is 0.3178. Okay. Now, uh, x a minus x b is also approximately normal minus 2.2 and 10.02 as the variance. right? Therefore, uh, probability x a minus x b greater than or equal to 1, because you want the probability that matches against class a teams, matches 1 against class a teams is more than the matches 1 against class b team. So, therefore, the difference must be greater than or equal to 1, it can be more. And so, here again we standardize, uh, so this is x a minus x b minus of minus 2.2, which becomes plus and this is under root 10.02, which is greater than or uh, equal to 5.5. So, here again uh, the uh, continuity correction factor is used. So, you subtract 0 0.5 from here. So, that becomes 0 0.5 plus 2.2 upon uh, this under root of 10.02. So, that is z greater than or equal to 2.7 upon under root of 10.02, which is uh, comes out to be this. From tables, you look up the value, which is point. So, 1 minus of that will be 0.1968. So, this is the probability. So, the in fact, the probability is low of winning more matches, because obviously, uh, this probability is much lower compared to the probability of winning a match against a B team. Okay. So, as we go on, more and more examples of all these concepts that we are um, talking about. Now, let us come back to uh, sums of independent Poisson random variables. So, x is Poisson lambda 1, y is Poisson lambda 2, then uh, and x and y are given to be independent random variables. So, uh, let us look at the uh, uh, distribution of x plus y. So, now the m g f since x and y are independent, m g f of x plus y will be the product of the m g f of x and y. So, m g f of a Poisson lambda 1 is e raise to lambda 1 into e raise to t minus 1 and uh, m g f for y is e raise to lambda 2 e raise to t minus 1. So, therefore, uh, this adds up to e raise to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 e raise to t minus 1 and this is a Poisson lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So, therefore, you immediately get the result and as I told you even earlier that you might try to do it directly. Right? That means, you may obtain the uh, uh, cumulative density function for x plus y um, distribution function for x plus y and then from there you can compute 
So, uh, having learned the uh, trick to use MGF for finding out the uh, distributions of uh, sums of random variables, um, it, uh, I, I will still uh, write it down for binomial and Poisson and so on. I think Poisson we have already done it. Yeah. So, now let us look at the sum of independent binomial random variables. So, here again b uh, x is binomial n comma p and y is binomial m comma p. Then we want to look at the sum and x and y are independent. So, then uh, again m g f of x plus y will be the product of the individual m g f's. So, here it is p e raise to t plus 1 minus p raise to n and for the uh, random variable y the m g f is p into e raise to t plus 1 minus p raise to m. And so, uh, when you multiply uh, the powers get add, uh, added up and so this is p e raise to t plus 1 minus p uh, m plus n and therefore, it immediately follows that x plus y is binomial n plus m comma p. So, if the probability of success is the same, then um, uh, the um, if you are looking at uh, uh, two random variables in one case the number of trials is n, in the other case the number of trials is m, then the sum will again represent the uh, binomial random variable, where the number of trials get added up. So, the probability of success remains the same. Okay. So, now once uh, having uh, seen this thing for uh, some of these distributions, one can now uh, you can whenever you come across something new, you can read it up and understand what is going on. Now, let us uh, look at the conditional distributions also. We have uh, looked at conditional probabilities, we have looked at Bayes uh, uh, conditional probabilities and so on. So, now uh, let us look at conditional distributions. So, remember uh, uh, that if uh, when uh, E and F were two events, then we define the conditional probability of event E given that event F has occurred and this was defined as probability of E intersection F that means, both the events must occur divided by the probability of occurrence of F. So, this was for the uh, events. Now, when you come to x and y are two discrete random variables okay, and um, you want to write down the conditional probability of x given y. So, where capital Y is let us say small y and x is x small x. So, if you want to compute this, then it will be again just borrowing it from here, it will be probability x equal to x y equal to small y divided by probability y equal to y. So, which you can write in your notation as p x comma y upon probability y equal to small y. Now, sometimes I may write the suffix, sometimes I may not. So, it does not matter, but you understand from the context that uh, this is for the single variable and this is for the joint p m f. right? So, this is for all y that means, this uh, conditional probability is defined for all y such so that probability y is greater than 0. Remember, I am dividing by a number which I must ensure is uh, positive. Okay. Uh, which is non-zero and since probabilities cannot be negative. So, the number must be positive. So, for all uh, possible values of y for which uh, there is a positive probability, I define it this way. right? So, conditional p m f of x given this. So, therefore, this defines the conditional p m f of x given that y is equal to y. Now, cumulative uh, conditional cumulative distribu distribution function of x given y is equal to y would be um, uh, you know f x given y. So, that will be probability x less than or equal to small x given that y is equal to y, which is then probability x equal to a given that y is equal to y and you are summing up over all a for which a is uh, less than or equal to x. And so, therefore, this is uh, the notation conditional notation. This is the prob conditional probability of a given y, uh, where um, a is less. Than, so, you are summing up over all a less than or equal to x. Now, if um, x is independent of y, then we know that uh, this probability, the conditional probability will be uh, written as, because here this will be the product of the two and divided by probability y equal to y. So, therefore, it will reduce to probability of x equal to x. So, that. So, therefore, we are just trying to show you that uh, whatever we did for the events, the same thing uh, goes over for the uh, random variables and their uh, corresponding distributions. Now, uh, just look at this example. Uh, if you are given that uh, probability of 0, 0 is 0 0.3, that means, x taking the value 0, y taking the value 0. So, so therefore, your x takes the value 0, 1 
and your y takes the value 0 1. Okay. So, therefore, there are po four possibility uh, probabilities p of 0 1 is 0 0.3, p of 1 0 is 0 0.2 and p of 1 1 is 0 0.2, they all must add up to 1. So, you want to uh, calculate the uh, conditional p m f of x given that y is equal to 1. So, um, first of all you need probability of y equal to 1 right in the denominator. So, therefore, uh, this is equal to p of 0 1 plus p of 1 1 right that gives you the marginal of uh, y which is a, a probability of y equal to 1. So, that is 0 0.5 and uh, hence uh, prob conditional probability of x given y equal to 1. So, if you want to find out, uh, then you see the possible values of x are 0 and 1. So, you will find out both the probabilities uh, conditional 0 given 1 y equal to 1. So, that will be uh, 0 1 divided by y equal to 1 probability of y equal to 1. So, 0 1 from here is 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.5 and that is equal to 3 by 5. Similarly, uh, probability uh, x equal to 1, when y is given to be 1. So, that will be p of probability 1 comma 1 divided by probability y equal to 1. So, which will be 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5 and so this is 2 by 5. And so, similarly you can compute then the p m f of, uh, well okay. so this is conditional. Now, you can fix the value of x and then compute the uh, conditional p m f of y. Okay. Um, Yes, now there is another interesting example. This says that if x and y are independent Poisson random variables with respective parameters lambda 1 and lambda 2, calculate the conditional distribution of x given that x plus y is n. So, now the condition is on the sum x plus y equal to n and you want to find out the uh, uh, conditional distribution of x. So, um, First, let us compute the probability x plus y and as I just showed you um, just a few minutes ago that if x and y both are independent Poisson random variables, their sum will be also Poisson and the parameters will get added up. So, this is e raise to minus of lambda 1 plus lambda 2, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raise to n divided by n factorial. So, this is easy because we have already seen the uh, distribution for x plus y. Then, um, yeah, you now want to compute the probability for example, x equal to k when x plus y is n. So, for the finding the conditional uh, probability of x given that x plus y is n. So, now if x is k, then uh, this uh, says that your y must be n minus k. Right? So, I mean here you will be writing probability, um, uh, yeah. so um, x equal to k and x plus y equal to n that will be the product and then divided by probability x plus y equal to n. So, intersection of x equal to k and x plus y equal to n is equivalent to the event that x is k and y is n minus k divided by probability x plus y equal to n. Okay. And since again x and y are independent, this probability I can write as the product of individual probability. So, this will be probability x equal to k into probability y equal to n minus k divided by probability of x plus y equal to n and this both being x and y both being Poisson. Uh, this is e raise to minus lambda 1, lambda 1 raise to k divided by k factorial. Then the other probability is e raise to minus lambda 2, lambda 2 raise to n minus k divided by n minus k factorial. This may not look very so, let me rewrite n minus k factorial. Okay. <laughs> you still cannot read it, but <laughs> it is there. And then e raise to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 probability of x plus y equal to n, which we uh, wrote down here. So, this is um, uh, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raise to, um, uh, then there should have been uh, e raise to yeah, lambda 1 plus lambda minus minus e raise to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and the n factorial goes to the numerator. So, therefore, collect these terms n factorial divided by k factorial and n minus k factorial that uh, comes here right? 
and then uh, you see here this is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raise to n and you have lambda 1 raise to k and lambda 2 raise to n minus k. So, this I break up into lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raise to k into lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raise to n minus k. So, then I get the terms lambda 1 upon lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raise to k and lambda 2 upon lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raise to n minus k and you see these two numbers that means lambda 1 upon lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 2 upon lambda 1 plus lambda 2, this adds up to 1. So, if I denote this by p, then this number is 1 minus p. Right. So, in that case, this then, this looks like, so that means a conditional probability x equal to k, given that x plus y is n, is binomial. So, therefore, for different values of k, you will get these probabilities, which are exactly the binomial probabilities for uh, the parameters n and your um, uh, probability of success is lambda 1 upon lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So, I think uh, throughout this course, I have been trying to show you that even though you have these different uh, random variables, uh, you how you can through uh, processes of addition, uh, conditional and so on, you can uh, see the connections between the uh, various uh, uh, distributions here and therefore, uh, uh, you know that makes the uh, things more interesting and of course, uh, very useful also. Okay. Thank you.